The Beacon 3 is ready for full review. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube! What's up, guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Happy 2021! This is the first video of the new year. Fingers crossed this year's a little bit better. I don't want to say too much and then it not happen, so we'll just leave it at that. Today, we're doing a full review on a shoe that I didn't think I was going to like. I tried it. I ended up really liking it, and now here we are, 50 miles later, for a full review. And that shoe is the New Balance Beacon V3. We made it through the wilderness, somehow we made it through. And now the New Balance Beacon is ready for full review. Okay. I'm gonna stop singing now. The Beacon V3 has me just as excited about this shoe as I was for the first version. And I think it's a shoe that a lot of people can like for a lot of different reasons. So we're gonna talk all about those today. But first, check out this footage of me running in the shoe, which I know you can't wait to see. structure my full reviews and let me give you a rundown. First we go over the specs, then we talk about the upper, the midsole, the outsole, and then my conclusions on the shoes. Ooh, I got a little tied up on conclusions there. And that's where I rate the shoe out of five stars. So if it's the best shoe I've ever worn and I never want to take it off my foot, it's going to be five stars. And if it's the worst shoe I've ever worn and I never want to pick it up again, it's going to be one star. Then at the end, I'll throw up a screen with the pros and the cons so you can get a visual idea of what I like and dislike. And of course, before we get started today, I just want to let you guys know that the New Balance Beacon V3 was sent to me by New Balance. However, they're not going to see this video before you. No one's going to see it before you. All my opinions are my own, as they always are. So let's stop all of this nonsense and start our full review of the Beacon V3 with the specs. The New Balance Beacon V3 is 7.1 ounces for a women's size 8, but for my size, 10 and a half women's, the shoe came in at 8.3 ounces. It has a 6 millimeter drop with 29 millimeters of stack in the heel and 23 in the forefoot. And as far as it being true to size, I'm not going to give it to them here. I didn't give it to them in my first run impressions. The shoe doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I do feel like I have a little extra length in that toe box area. And hmm, I think maybe it, I could use a 10. I, I don't think it would hurt. The upper of the New Balance Beacon V3 is an engineered mesh. It's the perfect amount of breathability, I'd say, where it's breathable and comfortable in the summer months, but in the winter months, your foot's not going to be completely frozen. We do have some overlays in the midfoot to help with structure. It appears that the New Balance logo is helping with that. And then if you go to the back, we have this crazy weird looking heel 
called the Ultra Heal. To me, it looks like a wrinkly brain. I do find the lockdown of this shoe to be pretty good around the midfoot area. And that's interesting because this shoe does not have a gusseted tongue. It's just able to get a good lockdown fit just using the lacing system. Now I do have a little bit of heel slipping in this shoe, but it's nothing that the last loophole on the shoe didn't fix. So I was able to move on from that. I was worried that this ankle area was gonna give me some irritation as I usually am with ankle collars that don't have padding like right on the top. It's more buried in there, uh, but I didn't have any problems with it. It was actually quite comfortable. And so was this ultra heel. I mean, again, like I said in my first run impressions, I don't know that this design does anything special that a traditional heel counter doesn't do. But what I will say is that it's not uncomfortable. It's not jarring. It doesn't take away anything from the shoe. It was able to lock me down, so I kind of forgot about it. But yeah, I, ha I have pretty much nothing bad to say about this upper besides the sizing. I didn't have any hot spots, blisters, irritation, and actually, no matter what sock I wore, I found it to be pretty comfortable. 50 miles in and the upper's still going strong. The midsole of the Beacon V3 is a full length slab of Fresh Foam X. And that's it. We don't really have a lot of bells and whistles here. And like I said in my first run impressions video, when I first took this shoe out of the box, I did not have high expectations for it. And it, the reasoning for that is that it just felt flat, but I was wrong because the shoe is fun to run in. Fresh Foam X is protective and it's pretty energetic. It's not as energetic as Fuel Cell is, but it gets the job done and it gives you the ability to do a lot of different types of runs in the beacon, especially because of how much fresh foam is underfoot. It's not a ton, it's just enough. And another thing that I noticed about this shoe while I was running in it is that it feels kind of snappy. Um, you can see here almost like it, it does have a little bit of snap. I've taken the Beacon 3 on lots of different runs because I didn't want to put this shoe down. I always wanted to run in it and I reached for it whenever I could. But there are two runs that I had in the shoe that I want to talk about and those were the two longer runs that I did. Um, I did a nine mile run at a more like conversational pace in the shoe and then this week I did a 10 mile run at, you know, still semi-conversational, but a little more up-tempo. And on both of the runs, I noticed around mile eight that I had wished I had a little more underfoot. Now, I don't know if that's because the foam is dying down because now we're up to 50 miles, or if that's just because there's not enough under my foot. I'm not really sure, but that is definitely something I wanna point out. I'm not looking for a 1080 V10 here, but maybe if we can put a little bit more material under our foot in the version four of the shoe, then I think it would be a little bit better just for like longer mileage. If you're a person who doesn't like having a ton of cushioning under your foot for longer runs, then this could be perfect for you. But for me, just want a teeny bit more. Other than that though, until like mile eight, this shoe was an absolute joy to run in. I love every single mile in it. And in fact, I think I told Kate and Ariana while we were running, I was like, oh, this just feels so comfortable just didn't feel as comfortable after eight miles. Can you take it up to 10 miles? Absolutely. It just wouldn't be my first choice. But like I said, this shoe is pretty versatile because it's lightweight, because of the amount of cushioning underfoot, you can do a lot of stuff with it. And I think it's a great option for somebody who just wants one shoe. If we turn the shoe over, you'll see that New Balance is using their Fresh Foam ground contact material. Basically, it's just the Fresh Foam with maybe like a little coating over it to make it a little more durable. And it's hard to see in my shoe because they're the same color as the midsole material, but uh, we do have three pods in the forefoot and then two on the lateral side of the heel, just for a little bit of extra durability. Despite this shoe having basically no rubber at all, the traction is pretty damn good. This shoe has been in all kinds of conditions. We got wet surfaces, dry surfaces, pavement, grass, sand, dirt, all that stuff that I usually run on and it held up just fine. And another thing I do want to say is that I actually like this like pod placement vibe of this outsole because it helps the shoe to flex, which I think causes the ride to feel a little bit more snappy like I was saying earlier. Now, what I will say though about the outsole is that it is wearing down a bit. The traction pattern is kind of smoothing out. I haven't had any real issues because of it, but it is something that's a little bit concerning since we're only 50 miles out. Overall, despite the tread pattern wearing down a bit, I am digging this outsole. Um, 
And I hope it has more miles in it. Fingers crossed. The New Balance Beacon V3 is on sale at runningwarehouse.com for $119.95, which I think is a pretty good price for this shoe. Would I like to see it at like $110? Yes, I think it would be an even better bang for your buck then. Um, but still, it's a pretty good value for everything this shoe can do. It can handle tempo, it can handle your easy days, and it can handle long runs, I'd say for me, up to like 10 miles. If you're interested in picking up a pair of the New Balance Beacon V3, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Keep in mind, this is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep trying out these shoes and hopefully helping you make the perfect decision. So as I touched on earlier, the New Balance Beacon V3 was a shoe that I thought was going to be a flop of 2020, and it ended up being one of my favorite shoes of 2020. In fact, it was in my top five of 2020 video. I think the positives of this shoe far outweigh the negatives, and that's why I'm giving the New Balance Beacon V3 four out of five stars. So yeah, maybe it does have a little bit of a sizing dilemma and maybe I'd like a teeny bit more in the forefoot in terms of cushioning and hopefully the outsole lasts even though that tread pattern is already wearing a bit. But again, those are small things that I think uh, kind of get overshadowed by the, by the positives. It's meant to be that every day, whatever you feel like doing shoe that can adapt to your run, your stride, and your pace. All right, so let's throw up a screen now with the pros and the cons. For pros, I have the comfortable upper, the midsole foam feel, that it's a snappy little shoe, it's flexible in that outsole, and in my opinion, it's pretty affordable. For cons, I do have the sizing, that the midsole feels great, but it might need a little bit more in the forefoot and the potential durability issues of the midsole and the outsole, but mainly the outsole. I think with every version of the Beacon, it only gets better, so I'm pretty excited to see what the 4 will look like. I have no idea when it's coming out, what it'll look like, if there is a 4, but my fingers are crossed that there is one, and it'll be even better than the 3, which will be hard to do. Well guys, that concludes my full review of the New Balance Beacon V3. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. You surprised me. You know that? I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. And happy freaking new year. See you next time.